So basically, the reason, the reason why Brother Paul forbids a man who has got many wives to the office of a bishop is because of the tasks and commitments that the person would have. So once he's married to many wives, it means most of his time he will not use it for godly things. Was he be attached to his so many wives? He will be very busy looking after his so many wives. So that's why maybe Brother Paul was given this uh, um, this scenario that a person who has got many wives should not be a deacon. But this is the only place where Brother Paul forbids a person to marry when he desires to the to be in a bishop or a deacon at a church. It's very specific, it's very clear. I don't know why people try to twist this, but this is the truth. If once you desire to be officer of a bishop, you're supposed to get married to one wife, and you're supposed to give yourself to wine after all. Too much wine. Not to, that you're not going to give, but you're not supposed to be given to too much wine. Because you desire the office of a bishop. You want to, be the, to get into the office of, an, uh, of a deacon. You are supposed to get married to only one wife. And we don't have any scripture. Which actually goes against what Brother Paul has said here today. So it is very unfortunate that preachers today, they condemn people or believers or children of God. Saying once you enter into marriage, into two or three wives, you are committing adultery. The word adultery is being misused by preachers today. Yes, they are misusing the word adultery. It's not, it's not scriptural for a person who is married. I'm sure, take, take this word, who is married? You are supposed to be married to the first wife. You are supposed to be married to the second wife. You are supposed to be married to the third wife. That means the fathers of those wives should allow you to marry their daughter. So this is what is very important to understand. The marriage, once you actually see that you want to marry another second wife, you go to the father of that damsel and ask for permission to marry. And if the damsel, the father of the damsel allows you to marry, their child. Then that is what calling marriage. It's not all about the paying lobola or a bride price that we are talking of here. We are talking of the father himself consenting to the marriage. And this is what we call marriage. So whether the father has allowed you to marry his daughter as a second wife or he has allowed to marry his daughter as a third wife. This is what we call marriage. So, for you to believe that adultery is a crime which is committed when a man marries another second wife, this is not true and it's not scriptural. It's not scriptural to believe that this is what we call adultery. This is not adultery. I want you to understand this. There are two offenses which are committed, which are sexually related, and this is fornication and adultery. Today I will take this opportunity to explain to you so that you really understand what is called adultery, what is called fornication, because these two words are confusing much to the believers of today, even preachers of today. They don't understand these two words, fornication and adultery. So today is the time that I shall take my time to explain this so that you really understand and appreciate what is the actual position of the Bible concerning these two words, fornication and adultery. And I want you to understand what is adultery now. That's the first word that I'm going to take to, to tackle on the adultery part of it. I want you to know what is called adultery. And I refer to Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. And what does it say? But I tell you, whosoever 
shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, and he marry another committed adultery. And you so marry the hey, that is put away, do they commit adultery? And this is also in Mark chapter 10, verse 11. And uh, this is also in Luke chapter 16, verse 18. You see? It, the Bible is... Uh, what, what, I want you to understand this. I want you to actually understand this. Because this is what is very, very important in my topic. If a person is said to be committing adultery, in the case of a man, The following points should be satisfied in order for it to be called adultery. And so in the case of a man, if the man is said to be committing adultery, they're supposed to be putting away, there's this aspect of putting away faith which are supposed to be satisfied. You are supposed to put away your first wife. That means you are supposed to divorce that first wife. Then after divorcing, there is this aspect of marrying another. That means if you are divorced, by merely divorcing, you are not committing adultery. This is what you are supposed to understand. That if you divorce, you are not committing adultery. But the aspect of you marrying again, while well, at you are divorced, marry another. That means the adulterer must marry another wife, another woman, while well, at her wife is still alive. You get the sense? You are now satisfying what you call adultery. By doing so, by marrying another wife, while well, at you are divorced, to the first wife you understand you must understand it here you must divorce your first wife so it means uh, if you are divorced to your first wife and you marry another person another woman you are now committing adultery against her that is divorced and in the case of a woman, if the woman is not married to someone else, then she is not committing adultery. But if the woman who is divorced is married to another person, another man, then that woman is committing adultery. They're supposed to be divorced. They're supposed to be aspect of divorce. They're supposed to be an aspect of marrying another while you are divorced. This is you are supposed to, unless it is for fornication, unless your wife has fornicated, you are not supposed to divorce your wife. This you are supposed to understand it. So, what do we call marriage here? It's God joining you together. Then at a certain time in point in time you divorced and after divorce you marry another person or the woman is married to another person that only one satisfies what you call adultery that means it's not adultery if a person who is married to the first wife enters into another marriage with the second wife that is not adultery it's not scriptural that the person who does that is committing an offense of adultery we are lying. There is no script that we support that. And anyone who believes that it is true that a person who enters into the second marriage is committing adultery. I have said earlier on that you need to be allowed by the father of the damn self. The father, the father, the, the father of the damn self should allow you to marry his daughter. So you should enter into that marriage with the second wife or the third wife. That's not adultery. And then that's not fornication either. Neither. It's not fornication. 
But it's adultery. When you are married, you divorce that woman. Then you, you marry another woman. And uh, this also applies to the woman. If the woman is married and he divorces her husband, and she gets married to another man, while well, her husband is alive, that is adultery against her husband. She is, they're supposed to be divorced and remarriage. If there is no divorce, but if the two, the, 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 the husband enters into another marriage, then that's not what you call fornication. That's not what you call adultery. It's not, doesn't satisfy the aspect of adultery. So, in these two aspects, we are seeing that adultery is not what we used to be told by people. You know, they used to like us that if a person is married and is, he, 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 he engages into sexual intercourse with another, with another woman, then that's what we call adultery. No, 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 no. That's not adultery. Adultery occurs only when you, are, you divorce your first wife. And you enter into, you must enter into marriage with the second person, while it's your first wife is still alive. You must enter into marriage. That's why the Bible says you are married to another second wife, to another wife. You put away your, your, your need. Let's, let's go back and read it. Matthew chapter 19 verse 9. But I tell you, whosoever shall put away his wife, save him for the cause of your fornication, and marry another, committed that doubt. That means you must, even though you are married to that woman, but it's simply because you have actually put away your first wife, then you are committing a doubter. That means you are not supposed to divorce your first wife. Yeah, if you are not divorced, then you are not committing a doubter. You are married to the second wife. That's not a doubter. But I know preachers of today, the they've actually called it a doubter. It's not, it's not in the scriptures. The scripture doesn't say that. Then we go to fornication. Fornication is a sexual intercourse between two unmarried people. That means we have entered into an, uh, a sexual intercourse even though we have agreed to end into that sexual intercourse. But simply because you are not allowed, there is no marriage between you and the woman. Just like we do, we men do when they actually come across the prostitutes. This is what we call fornication. It's not adultery. Even though the husband is married to another woman, and she gets another prostitute on the way, or a woman who is not married, and they come together. This is what we call fornication. Like what happened uh, in Genesis during the time of Adam and Eva. What happened between those two was the fornication. They were not married. They were not married. So the deed that the act that they did was actually called the fornication. They did the fornication between the two of them. So the same applies today. If you enter into sexual intercourse with a woman who is not legally married to you? Who is not married to you? Legal in terms of the father being accepting that marriage to you. Then this is what we call fornication. There's supposed to be no marriage between the two of you, but yet you have already entered. You have agreed to sleep together. You have agreed to be together. One thing that is supposed to understand that this law of fornication. applies to people not only those who are married even those who are not yet married it's not a doubter but it's fornication for a man to have sexual intercourse with a woman who is not married to her to him the same applies to a man who is married or a woman who is married if he engages in sexual activities with the 
with another man or another woman who is not married to, to who is not married to them these people they are engaging in fornication this is not adultery these two words should be distinguished because they don't mean the same even though i'm sure i made you but the truth is these two people are not doing the same thing that's why those two words are actually exhibited as they are in the bible fornication and adultery you must understand these two words fornication and adultery if a woman i wanted to clarify on this issue if a woman is involved in sexual intercourse before she gets married to another person that is what we call fornication it's not adultery it's fornication So, that's why you see during the time of the Israelites, any damsel who is involved in sexual intercourse, uh, they, they, they were stoned to death, they were killed. You see, there is nothing like that that could appear during the time of the children of Israel. Because they actually believe that a woman, she was supposed to be married a virgin. So if, if you're not married a virgin, that means you played the harlot before you got married. So they stone you to death. But the actual, the God actually directs that, he, that, that, that thing to happen. That if a damsel is found, not a virgin, then she was supposed to be brought in before the elders of the city and stoned to death so that uh, the evil could be eradicated, eradicated among the children of Israel. So basically we are saying there was nothing like a person who was going to be, a woman who was going to be married without her virginity during the time of old. That instruction was supposed to be followed, that a woman should be killed once she discovered before marriage that she was, uh, she slept with other people. Her virginity was broken before she got married. So that evil was not there among the king of Israel. They would kill. So what you're supposed to understand here is that there was nothing like that. There was no fornication. If the fornication could have occurred, it could occur among the people who are not married. If you are not married and involved in sexual intercourse between each other, then that's what you call fornication. That's why even the Bible says to avoid, if you read 1 Corinthians 7 verse 2, it says, Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. It's very simple and straight. To avoid the fornication. That means to avoid sexual intercourse between unmarried people. You should get married. You should get married. Because if you don't get married, then you'll be doing what you call fornication. So basically, we don't have an offense which is given. When a man is married to a second wife or a third wife or whatever woman that he is going to get married to, there is no any offense which is tied to him. And the other is that you are supposed to understand. Because the Bible says the twain shall become one. You are supposed to understand that even a man sleeps with a woman, even a prostitute, even though he is married, but if he sleeps with a prostitute, that relationship become one flesh. At that instinct, that relationship brings them to be one flesh. If you sleep like what um, um, Judah did with the Tama, he thought he, Tama was a prostitute, so he slept with the hair. Even though he was married, before he came to this place. He took time to be a prostitute. So even though he knew that this person was a prostitute, he went further to sleep with her. Th that, that alone the Bible calls it one flesh. I think you are supposed to understand it's not only your wife who will make you to have one flesh. No, that's not very true. That's not true. Let's go to the Bible. 
it tells us the truth about when a person becomes one flesh with a man. Let's go to Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. And what does the Bible says? Know ye not that he who is joined to an harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. So we must understand the scriptures rather than condemning people. If you sleep with another woman who is not your wife, you become one flesh. The aspect of being one flesh here is the carnal knowing of each other. The carnal knowing of each other. That's the carnal part of knowing each other. This is what makes it become one flesh. You are going to be joined together by carnal knowing each other. You cannot say to be married when you are not carnal joined to each other. No, 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 no. The carnal part of it, that means when you actually propose a prostitute and you sleep with her, that carnal knowledge that you are going to do with her, this is what makes you become one flesh. The same applies to, to your wife. The carnal knowledge part, this is one that makes you to be one flesh. So you are uh, supposed to understand the truth. You must understand the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now I come to the part of divorce. But before I come to the part of divorce, we really do understand. That's why I have said earlier on, we must believe the scriptures. And we must believe that every scripture that is in the Bible is inspired by God. You know, most of you guys, you will want to talk much about the story of Hannah and Penina. Hannah and Penina. And so many writers, so many artists have sung songs and, uh, which actually uh, uh, had the lyrics of Hannah and Penina and Alcana. Oh, I don't know whether you really understand the story behind Hannah and Penina and Elkanah. If you go to First Samuel chapter 1, it actually starts with the saying, there was a man who had two wives, who was Elkanah, who had two wives, that's Penina and Hannah. The whole story of, which comes out of the story of Hannah and Penina, it's not God condemning Elkanah for marrying two wives. No, this is not this is not what is being taught or what is that is scripture is mean meant for. No, no, that was not the reason. The story was Hannah was a lovable person among the married among the family. She had no child. And the Penina was actually laughing at her that she was barren. But because she went to God and asked God for a child, after some time, God remembered her and gave her a child. And this is the mother of who? Samuel. The prophet Samuel. What is the story behind that? What is the issue behind that story? It's not all about Elkanah marrying two wives. No, that's not the story. But I have, I have heard so many times people talking of Penina and Hannah. Penina and Hannah. Penina and Hannah. But today they started to condemn those people who are made to us. This is hypocrisy. This is not, it's not scriptural. That means whatever teaching that we get from there is not from the Bible. But our Bible is very clear here. The story of Penina and Hannah. It's not a story which was condemning Elkanah, no. But the, the truth of the story, or the aim of the story, was to put it in the open that God blesses those who believe in, even if you are at a polygamous family, God blesses everyone who believes in him. So Elkanah was blessed by a male child, even though he devoted the child to the word of God, but he, she was blessed. Hannah was blessed with the child. She was a wife to a person who, who had another wife, and she was blessed by God. So there's a teaching there, which most of you have actually failed to understand and see anyway. 
and there's a teaching so i come to the issue of divorce now when is a person supposed to divorce one you've actually seen that if a woman is involved in fornication she's supposed to be divorced if a woman is we cannot talk of a damsel who is not yet married and say she's supposed to be divorced no you give a choice in this aspect you give a choice you have actually find a woman or a girl whom you want to marry especially what is happening these days whereby the law does not allow killing of people say you have say you have found your girl whom you want to marry but before you get married you actually say that the woman was no longer a virgin it's up to you to marry her or not to marry her it's up to you it's optional but today, uh, because of this um, uh, issue that, you know, our lady, our, our, our daughters, they are not uh, up to date, you know, they no longer fear the Lord. So most of them, when they are school level, they, lo they, 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 they lose their virginity because of a number of circumstances. Some of them, you know, they come from very poor families. And uh, when they went to school, they may be wanting uh, to take advantages of people who are actually with good money in those colleges. So they end up um, giving themselves to early sex activities because they may want maybe to cover one or two things before they get married. This is happening. So for a man to enter into marriage with a person or a woman of that caliber, it's up to him to decide whether he is willing to enter into that marriage or not. You are not forced to enter into a marriage with a person who has uh, who lost her virginity before she gets married. But in this scenario, we are saying grace can be used in everything. Not all that glitters is God. Some of these people will realize their mistakes and maybe correct them as time goes by. So it's not always the case that a person who lost her virginity should be condemned before she gets married. No. We have got grace. You, you, you never know. Maybe God has actually prepared something great from that woman who has not a virgin before you get married to her. So in this regard, I don't have uh, a say much about it. But what I may encourage you is you must remain vigilant. You must remain faithful when you enter into that type of a marriage. But uh, the Bible says you can divorce, you, you can't divorce a woman whom you have actually married not a virgin, knowing very well that this person was not a virgin. We must understand this scripture. Once you are getting married, once you seek permission from the parents, from the father of the dancer, and they allow that's by seeking permission from there, he allows you to marry. Then after marrying, probably you discover that she was not a virgin. Yes, you can refuse, you you can divorce her. That's not a big problem. You can divorce her, but you are not can you cannot. There are scenarios here. You can't divorce somebody who knew that she was not a virgin, but you've been with her maybe for ten or fifteen years. You've actually brought the children to that effect. Can we still call that? Uh, you have actually seen that. He, this person was not a vision. No, no, that's not it. This is not it. the true teaching of Jesus Christ. This is a false teaching. So you can't divorce her. Divorce is only allowed when you see that woman who is married to you maybe for 14 or so years committing fornication. She is committing for that's fornication. That's not adultery. It's fornication. She is fornicating. She is engaging in sexual activity with another man while still she is married to you. That's fornication. So on that note, you can actually divorce her. Then the other way that can be used to divorce a woman is when she don't believe the word of God. Yes. If she don't believe the word of God, then you can as well divorce her. And this is in Faith Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12. And it says, 
If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she will be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And a woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and he be pleased to dwell with her. Let her not leave him, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were you children unclean, but now are they holy. So, but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. Amen. For thou knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband, or thou knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife. This is only circum another circumstance where divorce is permitted from the teaching of the word of God. So if she doesn't believe, if he doesn't believe, you can divorce, you can put it away. This part is merely preached to people. That if a sister does not believe in the way how we believe the scriptures to be, then can as well divorce her. If a brother does not want to believe what a sister believes, which is the true gospel anyway, not under God, the truth from the old gospel, then they, they both can separate. The Bible allows that to separate. But what are supposed to understand that if you de once you depart, once you separate, if the two of you separate because maybe you don't believe in the same way, you are not supposed to get married. And this is in uh, verse, uh, verse 11 of 1 Corinthians. And he said, but and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Or be reconciled to her husband. Let not the husband put away his wife. So if it happens that you decide to separate ways because of belief that is in you, either you're a man or a female, you're a husband, you're a wife, you're not supposed to get married again. Because once you get married, then you are committing adultery. That is what we call adultery. Even though, even though you are now separated because the gospel does not actually allow you to meet different perspective of seeing how the Bible says or maybe you don't agree with going to church together if we, it happens that you want to divorce then the Bible allows you to divorce you separate ways but you, after separation you are not allowed to marry because once you marry yet your wife your former wife you have separated with the hand. It means you are committing adultery before God. And one thing that is supposed to understand about the adultery is that the, 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 I've been talking about adultery all along as it happens. But when Jesus Christ came himself, he went further to say that adultery is not no longer committed only among us. Even a man, if he looks down, if he looks upon a woman to lust after her, then she is, he is committing a doubter. And you must understand here that the reverse is not true with a woman. The Bible never says if a woman looks upon a man to lust after him, he is committing a doubter. No. It, Jesus Christ specifically said if a man looks upon a woman to lust after her, he is committing a doubter. And a spiritual adultery in his heart. So the act itself of doing adultery has been extended to seeing now. If you see a woman in last after her, then you are committing adultery. This is very true. So the act itself is now fulfilling what you have already done in your heart, in your spirit. 
So you must understand the scriptures. And if you go to First Corinthians chapter seven, verse three, it says, "Let the husband render unto the wife with due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife has no power of her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband has no power of his own body, but the wife." So in a nutshell, we actually say that the Bible does not allow divorce to happen. It did not allow divorce to happen. Now we have got circumstances whereby we have got people who call themselves believers today who are married to one wife. Yes. But initially, before they get married, they actually are divorced. Simply because they were not happy with the first wives. Or simply because some of them, when they like, we have a scenario whereby people, because of lack of jobs in their countries, they travel to other countries like South Africa, Botswana, Tanzania to look for jobs. They, and when they arrive there, they marry, they, they, they involve themselves in sexual intercourse with the women of those areas. I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, this is what we call fornication. You left your wife at home. You are there in South Africa. You are married. You 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 are not married, but you are sleeping around with those women, whom you meet in South Africa or Botswana or Zambia. This is what is called fornication, and you shall be answerable for that. It is not fornication when you arrive in South Africa. You marry that person, that woman in South Africa. You marry. Her. You are allowed to sleep with her by her parents who are who in South Africa. That alone will be called, that's not, no, that's not what you call now fornication. You are free from fornication once you get married with that person, even though she is away from you. That we have got a scenario whereby we have got uh, believers who call themselves believers today who devote their first wife because probably the pastor or uh, the, the, the law states that you are not supposed to get married to another second wife after you married that person or maybe you haven't married that person you left a child with her and because you are saying the bible teaches you not to have two wives you left that wife behind i want to tell you this thing i don't think god is going to accept you because already when you met that woman, God acknowledged that is a marriage. God has already married you to that woman. So by divorcing her, simply because the Bible, which you say maybe is telling you to divorce, is, is the one which you are following, it is very, very wrong. Very wrong in this aspect. You shall be answerable. And remember, I've said the Bible says when she prays to God because of you that you have left her behind when you gave her a child simply because we are following the Bible which you don't even know her prayer is heard much more than what you do yourself so that's why most of these men are very weak very very weak indeed because they have lied to themselves my teaching is that once you have actually seen that you've made a mistake, you get into a relationship with another woman who is not your wife, the better you make it right. You must go and negotiate for a bride price from the father of that woman. Besides you divorcing her, you are supposed to do the right thing. Go back and negotiate the bride price so that the parents will allow and you will get a decision from her whether she still likes to get married to you or not because in the eyes of god when you when you you, you join together carnally god knew that that was a marriage before him so for those who divorce their wives simply because they 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 they, 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 they never like them after the after after sexual intercourse but yet they provide their own children then it is good for you to go and make it right. Even the Bible says, remember the wife of your youth. 
But we, some of you have not tackled on this. They have actually understood, they would have got uh, to understand it. Why it says you must remember the wife of your youth. Some of you have divorced and uh, you, you seem to be very comfortable with the present way of life that you are running. Well, at least your wife has got your son, he's got your daughter in the rural areas. You must repent. And don't you know, repenting, just talking through your mouth. You must restitute. Go back to the roots and speak to these wives, women whom you left behind. Their parents. So that they understand the situation that you were involved in. And besides that, make it right. The day of the Lord is coming. And God is talking about perfection. Ask yourself, will you be perfect when you have got two children who are crying in the rural areas whom you have left behind in the attached to another woman whom you saw here when you come here to the cities? Claim that you are now following the word of God and you have divorced them. You have got two children who are crying for support. You've got a woman who is in the rural areas who is crying for support and you are not supporting them. This is not the teaching of Jesus Christ. This is the teaching of the devil. Better you make it right and you follow the teaching of the word of God, which is the truth. And for this I say to you, brothers and sisters, thank you. I know that my video is going to cause a lot of controversies, but the better we believe the truth, we have got a permissive will of the Lord, which is supposed to understand. And the ones who are involved in this never try to tamper around with what God is actually doing together. Thank you. Amen.